Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Favi, and welcome, or welcome back, to Arrows DIY. On my channel, I love creating Dollar Tree DIYs, high-end dupes, thrift flips, and the occasional trash to treasure. Always on a budget. This is another episode in my fall series. You all know how much I love fall, and I am working on another farmhouse fall video, but today I have tiny treasure for you. This pumpkin floral arrangement is perfect for some whimsical farmhouse decor and I made it just using dollar store items. So I hope you enjoy. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. And leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. This video is part of the Your Take on Tiny Treasures hosted by Jerry at A Happy Hoarder and Little Treasures by Nancy. Both of these talented ladies make amazing miniatures and I'll leave their links in the description box below as well as the playlist link. So I picked up this wooden tray at the Family Dollar and it was a dollar and I'm just going to give it one good coat in this brushed copper color. This is by Folk Art and it's a very pigmented color so it only took one coat and I painted the front, the sides, I painted everything in this copper color. If you're not into metallics, you could definitely just antique wax this or just paint it brown and definitely put your own farmhouse twist on it. Now for the wheels, I've decided to build my own. So I'm going to use some toothpicks and I just cut those in half as well as some bottle caps I have from just water bottles. And I'm going to use my high temperature glue gun and just put a bead of hot glue on the inner portion. Since it's a high temperature glue gun, it does kind of melt the plastic a little tiny bit. It softens it enough for the tip of the toothpick to slide right in. And I pushed it in about two millimeters just to get the pointy part of the toothpick inside. As you can see, I just started by making the X formation. That way the spokes of the wheel are nice and even. And once the first four spokes are on there equally spaced, I go in and I add four more equally spaced in between the first four spokes we added on. This is relatively easy to do. However, you do want to be careful because they're toothpicks and they're very fragile. So if you see that you break a toothpick, just take another piece of toothpick and try it again with a the hot glue that I use is Gorilla hot glue and I've never had an issue. Now, while the hot glue is still warm, I put it down on my surface and I kind of press it down to kind of make to make all the spokes flat. Now, you want to be very careful because I'm showing you here, it can easily break. Um, to add more stability, I do go in and add this uh, bracelet. This bracelet is from the Dollar Tree. It's just a little girl's bracelet and my daughter was so nice to share two of them with me. So this is why I'm making two wheels today. You could totally make four wheels. So now I'm centering the bracelet over the wheel contraption we made and I'm just using my sharpie to kind of mark off the spots and when you mark the spots on your toothpicks you want to make sure that you mark the outside circumference of the bracelet not the inner portion because we still need to hot glue this to add more stability and to finish our wheel. Next, I'm going to use some scissors and cut off those little markings that we made. Uh, you want to hold on to your toothpick very firmly but gently. It's kind of a delicate balance there. But just cut right on top of the line that you made and um, size it up and see if it's fine. I still had to go back and trim a little bit more, but this is not too bad to do. Uh, in retrospect, to glue this on, I think I would have used super glue because it, I think that would have made it a little bit neater. However, hot glue works just fine. It gets the job done. So I would recommend maybe using a detail tip hot glue gun if you have one, but a regular glue gun works just fine. And you do have a little bit of wiggle room to get your placement correctly before the hot glue sets. After you have your wheel hot glued, together we're going to make two of them now once both of them are in position all finished we're going to give it one good coat of paint i chose to give it a base coat using some farmhouse white paint it's a paint and sealer in one and um, it's 
it worked out pretty well but if you have access to spray paint I think spray painting this in white would be a lot easier quicker I just don't have that access for the handle of our wagon I chose to use this wire frame holder you could find this at the Dollar Tree where all of the frames are and it's and it's just a photo frame stand now you could get this in different colors I've seen them available in gold silver as well as black so if you're going for farmhouse I think black would probably be your best option anyways I'm gonna take this uh, and kind of open up that V formation to turn it more into an L shape so it is a little tricky to bend this wire I had mine in storage so it got a little warped how about if you were to get yours brand new from Dollar Tree or wherever I don't think you would need to bend it this much it would be a lot easier for you once we get that into a more of like an open L shape I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue this to the bottom of our now dry copper wood tray so this handle here this frame holder is metal so you do not want to touch the part where we're adding the hot glue because hot glue is hot and does not discriminate so be very careful I do not touch it and I do hold it just like this until the glue fully sets I also choose to hold the handle down just to press it very firmly to the bottom of this wooden tray and it worked out pretty well and it's very sturdy like I said you can use any hot glue you want but I recommend Gorilla hot glue and it hasn't it hasn't come off at all so once that's fully set I go in with the same copper color again you can use any color you prefer um, and I'm just gonna tone down that gold handle because it's a little too brassy for me so I'm gonna give everything the same coat of copper paint and I love this copper paint it's um, the brushed metal by folk art so I paint everything the bottom the sides all of it everything I also give the wheels another coat of paint now I'm going to use this is this is part of the foam brush applicator from Dollar Tree I just popped off the foam top and I'm just going to use the bottom and I'm also going to use a wooden dowel so any wooden dowel will work I just now am measuring it to make sure that it fits inside the bottle cap because I'm going to cut it down and hot glue it to the inside of the bottle cap now I have no patience I could not hold this <laughs> for a long time um, I sped this up because I didn't want you to feel the agony of holding this for so long so uh, it does dry very very strong it's a very good bond um, but I, I was going crazy just waiting for this to dry so I decided to two birds in one stone hold the stick and give the back portion of the wheel another coat of paint just so everything looks uniform I mean I was holding the stick and I just didn't want to waste time and it kind of distracted me from my impatience <laughs> so I did the same thing I just added a whole lot of hot glue to the inside of the bottle cap and held it in place as I painted yes I'm I'm an impatient grafter <laughs> so once it's all set the hot glue set I go ahead and I place it so that the wheels don't pass the front of the tray once everything is hot glued in place and set I give the bottom portion another coat of the same copper color and then I give everything another coat of paint now you want to keep your layers thin because right now I'm taking off the extra paint looking kind of clumpy at the bottom the bottom that was just paint accumulated from the paintbrush if you spray paint this you probably won't have this issue so now I'm using this is the uh, this is the wooden stick from the brush and I'm cutting it down using my miter shears and I cut it down to the perfect height so that the tr the entire wagon is level with the height of the wheel which was about for my project it was about an inch and a half I use the first piece as a guide to cut the second piece at an equal length so now I'm just hot gluing it like so to the bottom of the tray and then I'll also give it another coat of the same copper color I just want everything to look uniform 
nice and neat and neat and finished from all angles I do give everything else another coat of paint so once this is fully constructed I just set it aside and now I'm going to work on the pumpkin floral arrangement so I use this pumpkin it fits perfectly in your hands so it's not too big I couldn't find a bigger pumpkin or I would have made a bigger pumpkin so this is the largest I could find so I just made it work now be careful when you pop off the stem because as you can see I totally ripped off the side no biggie though because we just hot glued it back into place and now we're going to give it a good coat now if you saw in the Mackenzie Child's inspiration piece it had a black and white stripe pattern so that's what I'm doing I'm just going to give it one base coat but I noticed when I started painting that this particular pumpkin was kind of bleeding into the paint I'm not sure why this pumpkin did this I've never seen this before so let me know in the comments if you've experienced this with this Dollar Tree pumpkin I've never seen this before maybe choosing another color would avoid this bleedage but so be careful if you are dipping your paintbrush into your bottle because you don't want to you know mess up your paint and using a wipey to take off that green stuff it took about five coats to get a stark white color and I let it dry overnight after the fourth coat and it was still turning the white paint into a light green tone so after letting it dry overnight with this paint and sealer in one I was able to give it its final white coat the next day now for the black I'm using my favorite sequin black color which is almost finishing but anyways I go in and I go in and I paint the black stripes now I'm using my favorite wide flat paintbrush and it's been a while since I've made one of these Mackenzie Child's pumpkins so I'm a little rusty so my, my lines were not as clean as they usually are also I don't recommend drinking coffee before you do this because it does make you a little bit jittery so that might have been what was going on I'm not sure what was going on with me this day but my lines are not as clean as they usually are I had to go back and fix them and go back went and I touched up the black and then I touched up the white and then I touched up the black <laughs> no biggie though I, I have fun making these black and white stripes <laughs> I can link the other video here if you'd like to see my other Mackenzie Child's pumpkins from last year but if you know about the Mackenzie Child style of pumpkins you do want streaks in your paint colors so if you do have some white mixing into your black paint that is good that is a good thing Mackenzie Child are handmade whimsical decor pieces so any uh, streaks or as they call them drag lines any of those things just add character to your project so if you're not going for perfection here I mean you could try your best but it's okay if you have some bleeding and some of the white mixing with the black that's okay and actually preferred in this type of decor piece it just adds to the whimsy of it all okay so as you can see here I just slowed it down a little bit so that you can see exactly how I did it not that I'm an expert but just so that you could see that I'm not perfect and it's totally okay the end product is just as beautiful and this is how the colors kind of mix together generally you would want a little bit of white streaks in your black sections then you would want some color streaks a little bit of black streaks in your white section I'm gonna show you now to add some more whimsy and colors we're gonna use the succulent color as well as this sunflower color and we're gonna add these colors to the creases in between the white and the black stripes and it does not need to be perfect because we are gonna dry brush one last time over this so I'm just using my large chippy brush to just randomly drag these colors in between so I'm starting with the yellow and then I'm gonna skip a section and then continue making these yellow stripes in between alternating 
between the yellow stripe and the green stripe. And I know it looks like a hot mess now, but you'll see in a second that it all works out. <laughs> it's all going to be fine. It's just fun creating. I do this for fun. I do this for me time. For It's important for your mental health to take some time for yourself so, and get creative so you don't go crazy. <laughs> Too late. I'm crazy. Okay. So I just go ahead and I dry brush some more white paint on the white sections and it's kind of hard to tell on the camera but you can see the faint yellow streaks and green streak streaks now i'm going to go in go in with this black paint right after and if you mess up like i just did just you know wipe it off not a big deal we'll just touch it up with some white paint and it'll be perfectly fine so as you can see i'm just going here and I'm gonna use the edge of my brush. You want more paint on your brush than less. That way you're able to make one nice clean line. And if you mess up, give yourself some grace. It's totally fine. Just go in and touch it up. Now I do find it helpful to keep my paintbrush still and move my pumpkin. So that might be helpful as well if you do try this. It's a lot of fun. All right, so as you can see here, I'm not worried too much about the bottom being perfect because it's going to be inside of the wagon. But this is how it's turning out. And there are faint lines in there. So the green and the yellow that we added are very, very faint. Now I'm just touching up the white. And if a little black gets on my brush, that's totally fine. I'm just going to continue adding those drag lines in those sections. And I just love it. All of my sections are not equal. Some have more drag lines than others, and I just love that. I feel like it adds to that character, that Mackenzie Childs vibe that we all love. Okay, so now for the, flor for the florals. Once the pumpkin is drying, we're gonna go in. I'm gonna use this pomegranate pick, and I'm gonna paint it, because we know how much I do not like orange. And then I'm gonna use this pick called Bittersweet, as well as this bouquet of sunflowers. Um, I'm only going to use these purple ones. Later on I end up adding some white ones as well, some cream ones. And I'm going to go in and use this one. This flower is so pretty. It's called Aster. I love the colors on that one and the shape. And then we're going to use some berries in this cream color. And last but not least, this is beautiful sunflower. I cannot believe I found this at Dollar Tree. I found it at Dollar Tree. Yes, there's a little bit of a mark there. It's totally fine. I am, I'm gonna roll with it. See, I, I roll with mistakes on this channel. No problem at all for me. So that, these are the florals we're using today. We might not use all of them, but we're going to pick some off of these. The ribbons we're going to be using in this project are these from the Dollar Tree, this Buffalo Buffalo check, black and white, as well as this beautiful plaid. I feel like it gives me the same look I'm going for with the gold metallic, as well as this green ribbon, which I had to track down from my baby who was running away with it. Okay, so we're going to start off with the Buffalo check ribbon. And, and I'm going to start off by measuring 10 inches in length and then just cutting the ends. I want to make some really cute buffalo check leaves for our floral arrangement. So once I cut off 10 inches, I made a loop. So I basically folded the 10 inch ribbon in half and I twisted the end that we cut. Once I twisted that, now I just want to join the other two corners at the other end of the leaf. So we're just going to hot glue the two corners together to kind of create that leaf shape. And then once that's hot glued together, I'm going to fold the other corner at the back of the leaf and bring it forward and hot glue it to that seam in the front. And I'm going to do this twice to just flatten out the tip of that leaf. Now if you don't want to use this for the floral arrangement, you could totally use this on a wreath or any florals. I think it would be a really cute addition to any 
floral arrangement any time of the year. So just be very careful because, you know, hot glue's hot. Use finger protectors. I just like feeling a little bit of the heat. I, I don't know. I just like doing that. So now we're going to take some toothpicks and we're just going to hot glue them to the base that we twisted there. And this is going to let us attach these leaves to our foam pumpkin. So I just add some hot glue, a generous amount of hot glue, to the tipped end. I just added a generous amount of hot glue to that end that we twisted and just shoving the hot glue and just shoving the toothpick as far as it would allow me and just twisting it with the hot glue, securing it in place. So this is what the pumpkin looks like with all of the drag marks on it and I really like it. So now I'm just going to add these buffalo check leaves anywhere I like. I kind of want it to be random so I don't equally space them just to add some interest and keep this unique. So now I'm going to take these two ribbons. I believe I cut them nine inch, nine inches. Now I'm going to take the two ribbon and I'm going to overlap them making sure that the bottom ribbon, the green ribbon, is peeking through on one end. Now I'm just going to fold it in half and kind of cinch it. You could totally use a zip tie or some jute twine to hold the cinch in place. However, I didn't want it to get too bulky because the pumpkin is very small. So I just opted to fold it in half, add the hot glue, and kind of cinch it as the hot glue was drying. And, as, and I also wrapped it around the buffalo check leaf. Kind of creating that cinch illusion. I just didn't want the tail to be too bulky and not allow me to add more florals. Okay, so that's how that's looking. Uh, you want to fluff up your bow. And uh, I do the same thing to the other buffalo check leaf on the other side. And remember, you can use any ribbon you like. If you don't like this pattern, I just thought that it looks very traditional and it matched really well with the florals I want to use for this arrangement. And remember, all of this is available at the Dollar Tree. If you find better quality buffalo check ribbon, you could probably just cut the ribbon into a leaf shape. I just didn't want this ribbon since it's from the dollar store. It's, I didn't want it to fray because it's super cheap, but it's still cute. All right, so this is what it's looking like. And now we're gonna go in with the florals. So I start with this cream colored berries and I cut the stems kind of long so that I can add some height to the floral arrangement. And as you can see, I just surrounded one of the buffalo check leaves with these berries. Now I'm going to add these aster flowers, they're so pretty, I, I think these are one of my favorites. And I'm just going to add them very close to the bottom base of the floral arrangement, but off to one side. But I want it to be very short and at the bottom of our floral arrangement. And I just made a cluster of three on one side between the two buffalo check leaves. Now we're going to add these bittersweet picks and I'm just going to put them randomly throughout and I keep them very tall so that you can still see them over the ginormous amount of flowers we just added. And I'm happy with that. I really like how the aster pulls that burgundy from the ribbon. Now these are the pomegranates, the mini pomegranates that we painted earlier, and I'm going to stick those right to the side of these aster, keeping them nice and tall. And I just love the muted tone on them. And you know, I actually like the black distressing that my son added. I think, I think he might have an eye for design. <laughs> Alright, so this is what I did for the 
pomegranates. I used this color, Vintage Tea Rose by Folgart. I painted this in a pine colored chalk paint. And once it was nice and dry, I came in with my chippy brush and I just dry brushed this Vintage Tea Rose color. It's like a mauve, this dusty pink. I just dry brushed it on one side of the pomegranate just to add dimension and this is the part where my son dry brushed it in black when I left it drying on my surface. He's always sabotaging my projects, but it's welcome. I mean, it's his home decor too, right? Okay, so now I'm going to take this giant sunflower from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to take off the leaves and I'm going to arrange them in a way where they don't block the pumpkin and we don't want to block a lot of the florals so I just opted to kind of cover one of the berry picks because I do like the texture but we don't need I didn't think that I needed to see so much berry you could see the berry from the side once I added one of those leaves I just tucked it right behind another leaf and hot glued it behind the other leaf now I'm gonna add this giant sunflower and I know it's excessive but I'm a little extra so you can add any flower you want. I just thought this sunflower was so pretty and it matches the wagon in that copper color. So let me know in the comments below if you like this arrangement and if you like sunflowers. But this is how it's looking. Oh, then I tap, I tucked the other leaf right in the middle there, it's kind of sticking up. I also wanted to hot glue it in place so that it's nice and open and I also hot glue the bottom of the leaves up a little bit away from the pumpkin because I don't want to cover our hard work okay so now I'm gonna add some tumbling tower blocks to the center of the wagon that way it adds height to our pumpkin it's kind of like a little stand I opted to cover it with buffalo check ribbon because I don't want to see tumbling tower blocks <laughs> and it kind of matches with our leaves now I added some of these picks later on I do tuck them in in a little bit but this is how it's looking so now before I hot glue this pumpkin I wanted to make sure that it was at the right height and I still thought that it was a little bit too covered so I opted to add some more Jenga blocks actual Jenga blocks I just had in my stash just to add some more height to our pumpkin. I ripped off the buffalo check ribbon and then I wrapped another Jenga block with more buffalo check ribbon. And this worked a lot better. I feel like it gave me the proper height that I was looking for for our pumpkin. So I just wanted to cover, I didn't want the Jenga block showing, you know, I just wanted everything to look nice and cohesive. So once I was happy with the height, I think it was about two inches in height. I went ahead and I hot glued the pumpkin and that's how it's looking however the florals we added at the base of the wagon were kind of covering the pumpkin so I did go back and push those florals down into the wagon so we still see the colors creeping in it helps add that organic feel of a pumpkin patch however it's not blocking our hard work and our beautiful pumpkin so that's how it's looking. I tucked them in on all the sides and now I'm just fluffing the ribbon and kind of turning the ribbon so that it's kind of like an S shape to add some whimsy to our ribbon and just hot gluing any leaves upwards. Just hot gluing them to some other florals that are there. But this is how it turned out. Let me know what you think. I think it's so pretty using Dollar Tree items dollar store item sorry I got the the tray at family dollar but anyways let me know if you would try this arrangement if you like the colors I hope you found an idea or two to inspire you in your fall home decor I had a lot of fun creating and I am working on another fall video so stay tuned for a video coming at you real soon thank you so much for watching friends take care God bless I'll catch you on the next one bye if you like this video here's another one you might enjoy